thank you for uh, sitting down to have a chat with me. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, who you are and what you spoke about at Ecosystems today? Sure. My name is Tom Raftery. I work for a software company called SAP. Uh, we develop pretty much what, what we call back-end software or ERP software, uh, which is software that is used typically by businesses. Uh, so many people outside of industry would not have heard of us. We're not a consumer-facing brand. Uh, my role there is I am a global VP, futurist and innovation evangelist. And I spoke today on what I call the sustainability imperative, which is how sustainability is changing from being a nice to have for organizations, which it was for the last kind of 10 years, to now being an actual business imperative for companies who want to thrive and survive. Fantastic. Okay, so this is a pretty indus interesting industry you're in. Uh, what sort of trends and technologies do you see developing in the next uh, five to 10 years? Yeah, it's uh, the good thing about the industry I'm in, technology, is that it's always changing. Uh, and that suits me because I'm very ADD and if things weren't changing, I would get very bored very quickly. So I need to be somewhere where things are being disrupted. So in, in the work I do, I concentrate a lot on where there is large disruption, places like the energy sector, places like aviation, transportation, um, the whole sustainability sector, for example. And the kind of trends that I'm seeing there, well, in the uh, transportation sector, we have what's called the CASE megatrends, where CASE stands for Connected, Autonomous, Shared and Electric. And so transportation is being massively disrupted. Big, big, big trends there, shifting away from internal combustion engine to the electrification of transportation, uh, shifting towards more autonomy, but still not autonomous, just uh, driver assist systems so far, but we're heading towards autonomy. But we're also heading away from uh, personal ownership of vehicles and moving more into long-term loans, long-term rental, I should say. Uh, so where people, instead of buying a car, they rent one for three or four or five years and then give it back and then get another. Uh, and that, uh, that's, that as, as, we, as, we tend, as we trend towards that model, it means that the vehicle manufacturers maintain ownership of the vehicles. Uh, and so that means that there is no uh, desire or no incentive for the manufacturers to build in obsolescence. Quite the opposite. So it, it worked out to be quite a sustainable model. So that's, that's the kind of interesting technologies and trends that I'm seeing. Oh, fantastic. That would be removing uh, built-in obsolescence is, a, is only a, a good thing. Exactly. Um, so what opportunities do you see uh, as a result of these different trends and who do you think uh, will really be impacted by them? Yeah, so the, the opportunities are immense. So if we, if we think about the electrification of transportation, it's a really interesting one because this is kind of counterintuitive, but the batteries in electric vehicles last forever, contrary to what many people think. They're not like the batteries that are in your phone or your laptop. Well, technically they are, but the way they're managed is completely different because when you plug in your phone at night time for it to charge, it just charges. There's very little management of the charging happening. But when you plug in a car to charge, there's a whole battery management system there, which makes sure that it, it charges at the right pace and at the right temperature so it doesn't get damaged. And so today, the batteries in vehicles uh, are rated to last about 350,000 kilometers, which is longer than the average lifetime of a European car. And the newer batteries that are being developed by Tesla, for example, uh, they have a rated lifetime now approaching millions of kilometers, about four million kilometers. Oh, wow. And so when you start to think about that, it changes completely what you would do. Because if you have a battery that can last the lifetime of 10 or 11 vehicles, <laughs> why would you then manufacture more of them? Why wouldn't you just use it in 10 vehicles over their lifetime. So what you would do then, as we, as we talked about, we're shifting, to, we're shifting away from an ownership model. So now the vehicle manufacturers manufacture the battery, put a top on it, rent it out for five years, bring it back, 
put a new top on it or just maybe swap out some of the components for newer, higher technology components, send it back out again for another five years. And so suddenly you're getting nearly new cars going out every five years using about a, a tenth of the materials that it takes to push out a new car. So an incredibly sustainable model. It's a really exciting time. And of course, what it means for us as consumers is that we can get a new vehicle with all the latest technology every five years for a fraction of the price and for a fraction of the sustainable, or sorry, the, the, the climate implications. That, um, this is a really, really exciting technology. I'm very glad to hear like the sustainability is um, really at the forefront, which is great. Uh, whenever we have really exciting opportunities like this, I, I, I imagine there are sometimes uh, problems, which are obviously mean there will be solutions, but uh, with these trends, do you foresee any particular problems or? The biggest problem at the moment uh, with the likes of electric vehicles is there aren't enough batteries. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you were to go out to a car dealership today and order an EV, it would be probably six to eight months before you would be able to take delivery of it because the demand is hugely outstripping the ability of the manufacturers to supply them. Because it's one of these things where the demand ramps up, then the manufacturers have to catch up to the demand, and then the suppliers to the manufacturers have to catch up, and then the suppliers to those suppliers, and they have to build mines to mine the lithium to make the batteries, you know, so you get the whole idea. So that's, that's one of the big problems, uh, is there today the manufacturers of EVs are demand, uh, they're, they're supply constrained, they can't meet the demands that are out there. Okay, well, I really, really hope to see way more sustainability in the future. It's uh, where everyone should be headed, in exactly. my opinion. So thank you so much for sitting down to have a chat with us, and I hope you've enjoyed Ecosystems. I've had a great time. Thanks, Alex. Fantastic.